Hello, Rim to the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery of Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 337. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the home KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, everybody. We're sitting here waiting on a big snowstorm. <laughs> I think it's supposed to start as rain tonight, and then it's we could have up to, I think, two inches of sleet and ice, and then up to... Twelve inches of snow. But I think we're in the six, six to, to eight or... Are we in the 6 to 12? Well, anyway. Unless I, they changed it already again. I love snow, and I always feel bad because I want snow every winter, but it makes it hard on people on the roads and things, and we sure don't need a nice storm that affects electricity. Uh, but that's that's what we're doing, and so uh, we're, we made plans because the roads are going to be treacherous, they said, for a couple of days to uh, just get everything here so we could work from home and... Um, I'm just kind of looking forward to the snow. <laughs> I'll just admit it. She'll watch the snow and I'll write. I just so. love to sit and watch the snow and pray. It's one of my favorite things. Um, when I was praying this last week about the podcast and what God wanted us to say, um, I knew one thing was that I need to mention more people in prayer. Remember last week I mentioned uh, Kelly out in California and her husband was so sick. Uh, and she emailed me the next day and said that God heard the prayers. He had a, a turnaround. So thank you guys for praying. God's hearing your prayers, and I wanted to and mention a, a couple more the, people. The remnant pack of power punch. I, I'm telling you, powerful prayers. I wanted you to pray for Camilla. She uh, had a, a really bad report from the doctor on her health. And so I want you to join with me and ask for a miracle work in power, that for a testimony of the healing power of God to flow through her body, and that she'd be totally restored. This is something she's been fighting for, for a while, so let's let's just agree with that. Also, I wanted I meant to mention Jenny last week, too, because she her whole family's had COVID. I think she's pretty much been trying to take care of everybody, and she had COVID, too. So would you join me in, in praying for strength for her and healing for their whole family? Yeah, and, and I need to start printing out some because I've got some that I've gotten this last that's, week. And that's I, what I we need have. to do. And I think we I've been remiss on that, guys. I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm going to have you join with us more um, because there's power yeah. in in the agreement of We prayer. have a book that we put them on that we pray over every yeah. night. But we're going to start that, I think, because... We I, need I, more people praying. <laughs> I think we're in a season uh, that goes back to the last podcast that God is saying, listen, if you ask and you ask mm-hmm. out of a good heart... Mm-hmm. He's going to answer. And these, and I, I believe that these, I think we're going to see miraculous healings. And I think it's going to be a testimony to the power of our God. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I think we're going to enter into a season. I think 2022 and 2023 could be uh, times of great revival of supernatural things that if we'll, that if we'll press in, and uh, guys, that, of course, we'll get into this here in a little bit, but I think the, the enemy really wants to try to keep us in the flesh at all possible or to keep us uh, in our immaturity because he's afraid of what God's going to do. And so this, this is a time to, you know, the, to lay down childish things. This is a time mm-hmm. to, to pick up and begin walking in the kingdom and not be moved by emotion but be moved by the Spirit of God like never before. And if we will, Mary, I believe that we're going to see signs and wonders we're going to see things turn around that we never ever dream possible i believe it and i believe that we're going to see things that beyond what was in the old testament because there are new um things with technology things that weren't there um but i think that god's gonna show us how to overcome all of it oh the the technology doesn't take god by surprise that's i think that is the reason When Jesus said, you know, the gates of hell shall not prevail against me, he took his disciples to Mount Hermon because he said, listen, you guys don't have a clue what technology is, but what the watchers did and the technology they bring is going to be loosed upon humanity. But let me tell you something. It's not going to stop my ecclesia. It's not going to stop my my people from doing what they're supposed to be doing in the earth. That's right. And I believe what we're seeing, why there's such a shaking going on, which the Bible tells us will happen, is because God's trying to wake up the nations. He is. 
And I believe that, that America is, it's just went down such a path of sin and iniquity that it's going to take a lot to shake people. You know, because of our sinful nature, we're drawn like moths to the flame uh, to the world and, and what the world offers and, and all of our um, fleshly desires and things like that. And I heard a, someone talking this last week about a report that's out. I think it's on A&E. I didn't it write is. is it? Uh, it was a new series out on Hugh Hefner. You know, where he, he's the one that had the Playboy magazine, very famous person. And, you know, they Mike, they honored him on TV. Well, like, they, I can they remember, made him look hip and I cool. I can remember and, back, like, in the days of Laugh-In and those old, stu- what I call stupid shows. I couldn't even stand them, but I remember they would, would advertise he was going to be on there. He And they put him they would put him as a, a, a figure on, like, Sex in the City, which <laughs> that kind of tell us what it's about. I've never watched it, but I, I assume we could tell what it's about. And then, you know, even that Simpson cartoon. So they, they raised him up, Mike, as almost like a symbol to be, um, you know, glorified or something like this. Is, this is the epitome of what men should want to be. And Mike, he was the one that was behind all of these filthy things. And, you know, to, all those, to include bestiality. Well, all it. those years, you know, we just saw this front thing where women were dressed up like little bunnies, which was that's bad enough, and and what he did. But in this um, in this new series, they they go a little deeper into people that were around him and were telling things that he was into, and it is beyond belief. It's it's like the thing I, he had to be connected with these people in the occult. He had to be. Uh, you don't get that depraved. Without that, but just just to show you, look at what Satan does. He takes these people and puts them on a platform, and everybody goes, "Oh, Hugh Hefner, and all this stuff," and they're depraved. They are. They're depraved individuals. He he is known as the embodiment of, of the Kensley Report, and now the Kensley Report was the, Ken, the Kinsey Report. Kinsey is Report uh, was the one that absolutely uh, normalized uh, sexual perversion. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it caused uh, judges to change court cases and rulings, and uh, it, it, it and it actually that report set the stage, Mary, for the satanic rebels that we call the 1960s, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and the occult recognized it as an occult rebel, mm-hmm. satanic rebel to change the world. And my look at all the junk that they brought, and we went from. Uh, the biggest thing that kids had to face at, at school, maybe the tick, you know, every once in a while a bully, but it was like chewing gum in school. Yeah, and, smoking or something. And then look at what they're faced in our schools now. Many yeah. of them in, in larger cities have become nothing but war zones. Yeah, it's, it would be very frightening to have to send your child to one of those bigger schools. Well, I guess even the smaller ones, there's yeah. the and threat there. You need, you need to cover them with prayer, that's for sure. And then they're indoctrinated to become Marxists when they grow up. Right. So. And then you're lucky if even in the, you know, those younger grades that they aren't exposed to pornography on some other kid's phone. Well, they're, I, I mean, mean they're, they're teaching sex education now in some schools as, as young as kindergarten. But, I mean, we're, we're to, um, to a place where there's no doubt in my mind that judgment's on the doorstep. I think some of it's going to happen no matter what because of all of the innocent blood and all of the children that have been tormented and um, traumatized and even murdered. And so um, God kept taking me to the book of Micah. And so I want to read uh, first in, I didn't write down the, I didn't write down the chapter. (laughs) Micah chapter six. Oh, okay. Well, that was for the second one. Okay. But I don't, this, I don't think it's the first one. That, well, it's in Micah. Micah is a short thing, and I don't have my Bible here on the table. So it starts in verse 15 of one of the chapters. <laughs> <laughs> Probably five. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. Will he turn again? Will He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue um, our iniquities. And thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. 
Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob in the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. And so as I, I was reading this, I was thinking, uh, you know, this was talking about God's people when they, they came out of, of Egypt. And, you know, Micah's t- saying, hey, you're in big trouble here. Uh, but he's saying, saying that God's going to pull the remnant out and that there is no other God like ours that shows right. mercy. And, and in all of the things that we're going we're gonna to see happen, God is going to restore and use his remnant. You know, they, um, we've seen a lot of the kingdom of darkness power. I mean, it's, it's even so boasted on TV. Now you can't even turn on to watch the, the news at 9 o'clock because they have all these horrible um, things about vampires and witches and just awful stuff. You don't even want to watch 30 seconds of it. And um, they've just glorified it, Mike, and they and they've boasted of it. Well, they think the kingdom of darkness has power. Wait until they see his power that he's held back for such a time as this. Well, you know, there there was a transition period as as God was calling Moses uh, to go back down into Egypt. Uh, that for all the years that they were in bondage, and it wasn't it wasn't a full four hundred years. And we actually look at there, they were probably in, in slavery for about one hundred twenty five years. Prior to that, they were doing commerce, and when uh, the southern pharaoh came up, who never knew Joseph, who never knew Jacob, uh, he feared them and enslaved them because he said, you know, these people could raise up an army to— There were a lot of them. (laughs) Yeah, there were a lot of them. Uh, But they saw occult power. They they saw these things. That's that's one of the reasons when Moses saw the burning bush and God says, hey, let's uh, let's take your uh, staff, turn it into a serpent, let's— you know, put your hand here and then, okay, pull it out. It's leprous. Put it back in your cloak. Pull it back out. It's that didn't impress him, Ray, because he saw that in a lot of other things mm-hmm. well, the, uh, that, the that were in can Egypt. Get things done. And so, in other words, there was this sustained period of occult superiority where it was manifested and everybody knew the power that the occult had until God showed up. Mm hmm. And when Moses came down, there, there was a transition period that God judged all the Nephilim spirits that they were worshiping. Every single one of those plagues was a mm-hmm. judgment on their gods. And they sat there and witnessed it. And, and they witnessed it, and so that was a transitional period. I think that we are in a similar transitional period to where the, the elite uh, are, are boasting and now they've that we've heard where they brought in uh, one of the top witches on the planet like a devos and different things like that and they boast at this occult power but you know what one of the most powerful phrases in the world and the entire word of god is but god that's it and we're we're at one of those but god moments i think in history uh-huh. and before i forget it too uh, february 2nd is a high occult day called candle mass and um there's usually child sacrifices. Um, I don't know if they do it like they used to or not. I don't know if it's required or did abortion take the place of it. But it's no no matter what, it's a time when the occult are going to gather and do rituals. And usually a couple of days before that, you'll feel a lot of pressure because it builds a lot of pressure. There's an enormous amount of people in the occult that will do things on these holidays at the same time. And, and it packs a punch. And they, they yeah. send... Curses against um, Christians. It's in curses against uh, political figures, anybody that could be standing in their way. So, so we just ask God to forgive every sin of every occult person uh, that's going to participate in candle mass. Father, forgive the sins of their ancestors. Break ancient occult powers. Make them confused and confounded. Send angels in a roadblock. They're gathering together their communication, their transportation, drugs, sex trafficking, anything that's got to do with that. Father, we bind it up, we forbid it, and we loose the power of the kingdom of God to make it null and void in Jesus' name. You know, a friend of ours, Randy, sent me a link yesterday uh, to a documentary that has documented that government dollars are being spent to traffic kids. Oh, I don't doubt that at all. I think something's going on on the border with that. Oh, I do too. Well, God's getting ready. You know, this. Uh, like I said last time, that there's a new level of revealing that he's, and so we got to just, you know, hang on, hang on to your bloomers, like my family used to say, <laughs> because, you know, there's more stuff coming. But our God's bigger, and, you know, 
I remind myself of that a lot, like when, when it looks like overwhelming that the enemy's just getting so much done. You know, he's the same God that did all those miracles, brought them out of Egypt, big flames of fire. Um, he gave them the ability to take the promised land out of the hands of these enormous giants. Yeah. You know, it's it's nothing on, on man's part, but if we're obedient and we'll do what God says, he backs us up with power, and there's nothing can stand against it. You know, he sent that one angel. And it, and it wasn't just the, the, the giants, Mary. It was entire civilizations, if you will, mm-hmm. created around the doctrines of the Nephilim. That's right. Just like today. Well, and it, like in Sennacherib, which is a spirit that's loose today, um, one angel stopped 185,000. That's pretty big. You know, he'd send fire from heaven and make atomic weapons look like nothing. He'd send waves so high that it destroys everything in its path. What can't God stop? Nothing. And we keep that in our mind no matter what we see because they're going to bring, um, they're going to bring AI things that are going to be terrifying to people. You know, they're, I just think if they had uh, something like these little robots they've shown you now, you know, like you'll see these little dancing dogs and, and things. You got to think this is, this is a hydraulic power that can be in a machine. <coughs> and and I, I think I've seen, even way back when, before anything was supposed to be well, anywhere near it, very large things that were mechanical. Well, hydraulic power can crush cars. Right, it can... right. So, but here's the thing. No. If God's got your back and his power's there, it's nothing, guys. I'm serious. If you've got faith and you stand and believe he can stop a plane, he can stop a train, <laughs> you know, anything that old Superman, <laughs> there's nothing, nothing compared to God. And it show just how advanced some of these things are. I know in Japan they have uh, some receptionists that will sit out front that are so realistic you can't tell them from a human. And with what they're doing with the Olympics now, I don't know if you've seen this on the news, but uh, all the cooking and everything that's being done for all the Olympians that are there are all being done by robots, so there's no chance of COVID. So from mixing drinks to fixing a gourmet dinner and delivering it is all being done by robots. Well, they they want to enslave the people, and so they'll get all that kind of work done so they can do other things with us. I guess that's the yeah. plan. But you know God's plans override them, and he sits and laughs at them. He can, he can turn these plans over in a day, in an hour. We know Revelation is going to come to pass. I'm not disputing any of that. I dispute of how it's going to go exactly. I don't think it's going to go, everything's just bad, tribulation, we're gone. I think that there's a time when God is going to show his power because there's so many people haven't seen it. There's so many people haven't been taught the truth, even in churches. So we have, my thought's been this for years, is there has to be a discipling period. There has to be something where God not only saves his remnant, but gets them taught the the truth of the word. If you don't know the truth of the word, you can't stand on a foundation and you can't stand against big, scary things. And, you know, the, the truth is, even when you look at the book of Revelation, there are a lot of different theories out there. You know, the, of course, I was raised in the standard dispensational, that that's the, you know, seven-year period. But there are there's a majority of theologians that believe that uh, everything that's laid out stretches from the time that Jesus ascended until when he comes back. So we're actually seeing maybe 2,000 years stretched over that time. I think we've been pigeonholed. I do too. Into something looking at Revelation a certain way. And I and we're not, I don't we're not have, looking at it with Hebraic eyes. I don't have, you know, the theology background that a lot of y'all have. Um, I just, in my spirit, I sense it's not exactly like everybody's thinking it's going to go. And I guess we're just going to have to see how that plays out. <laughs> but in the meantime, um, you know, we've talked about this scripture before. It's also in Micah. And it says, uh, he has showed... Showed thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And to to match all of the things that the enemy is going to bring, we're going to have to have the kind of faith that can stop an army. And I believe we can do it. And so I was reading this, and I was thinking, okay, what, what are the elements that we have to have to stand firm in faith so that we can see these mighty works of God? Because he's, he's going to do it through his people. He's either going to have a prophet speak something out, it'll happen. He's going to gonna have somebody pray a prayer in front of a big group of people, and it'll happen. It's going to go like that because he's going to show his power through his obedient people. Oh, absolutely, he will. And so I asked Mike, um, 
if he would would kind of break this up um, because I knew like justice obviously be related to God's law and we have to walk in love and mercy. We have to realize that we can only accomplish anything worthwhile when empowered by God and obviously that humbles us. Um, but I wanted him to uh, to tear that apart for us. <laughs> you know, and uh, we, we need to set this back into its uh, biblical context because Micah really got up in their face about some things. And one of the things he got up in their face about was they weren't walking with God, Mary, that they were trusting in ceremonial sacrifice to do it all. That required nothing of them. So since we, as long as we keep the sacrifices going, we can just be as ugly and as, as, as sinful and everything else as we can be because it's all about ritual. <laughs> it's all about the ritual. And, you know, today we could, we see some of the same things that, okay, whether you're, uh, tend to be more Calvinistic and, you know, once saved, always saved. So I got my golden ticket and, uh, I don't, I don't have to, you know, worry. I can do whatever I want to do and they're going to have to let me into heaven. And my, my big thing about that is if you demonstrate no fruit, you don't know him. Okay. And we, we can even bring it over into the Hebraic heritage movement because one of the things that one of the things that I've seen, and I, I've had friends, Mary, that have taught our Hebraic heritage uh, their entire lives, and now they're in their seventies. Okay, so I mean forever, and there is so much crazy stuff going on in the Hebraic roots movement now. They don't want to be associated with it. Well, I don't think anybody would. If I, seen I don't. What we'd seen. <laughs> I do not go a week uh, without getting emails of people demanding that why why don't I use the sacred name of God of course you know which version of it because there's like 40 different ways of saying Yahweh or even Yeshua or you know how dare you keep the sabbath on saturday and we're, we're not uh, a long time ago I was presented with this with this whole concept of the you know astrological uh using you know the the new moons and all that to figure out when uh, the days of the week are and everything. And so I contacted friends in Israel that are scholars and say, is there, has there ever been a time <coughs> that Israel uh, kept this kind of, of way of reckoning what, what the days were? And uh, they did about two months worth of research and came back and said, never, never. Uh, you know, the, the seventh day is the seventh day. And what's, what's interesting when you study out how that we have uh, the seventh day within the Roman calendar, it was the effects of the early church and Judaism, Mary, because Rome originally had a 10 day week. Mm. And, but uh, even, even Sunday worship where they had the Sunday Sabbath uh, with Rome never had when they worked seven days a week, but the citizenry began to complain that all these Jews and Christians took off Saturday well, and we, you even recently had a question about since this, this is supposed to be a Shemitah year in Israel, are we not supposed to plant? And wasn't the basis, one of the basis for the Shemitah year was to let the ground lay fallow, right? So yeah. that the nutrients could be. And um, I'd say if somebody wants to follow that, I do think this is an important year to plant because of the food shortages. And, you know, usually like if they have a Shemitah year, the year before they do double and they had so they have plenty of food and things like that well i had, hadn't heard that it was a shemitah year in israel but i had already planned on doing raised beds and raised beds uh let you plant but it's not going to disturb the ground and they even have um some of the the better farmers that that i know rotate, rotate uh, the fields rotate the fields you know and, and, and what's interesting you know there's there's no commandment about not doing uh, the shemitah although for uh, there's no record of the early church ever doing it. Uh, I think one of the things is kind of like uh, building a sukkah uh, during tabernacles. It says if you're native born and you're living in the land, the Shemitah is directly connected to the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. For that land, that land of promise to rest, I have its Sabbath. Uh, one of the things that I personally do is I think with every Shemitah year, there's a lot of prophetic things yeah that i go think on. that's more significant is is realizing what goes on in shemitah years and years of jubilee and so you know we can do we are you are we judging other christians because they don't keep the shemitah year well when you look at it you know it's all about living in the land of israel and i, I think that a lot of this god is calling us to maturity 
Uh, I mean, I, it's, it's like some of the things, it's, it's just, it just almost gets to the place of, of being ridiculous. There's, you know, 20 different calendars out there. There's 100 different ways of figuring out the Sabbath. There's all these different things. What I have noted, you know, Paul always talked about following the Spirit of God. There is a difference spiritually from Friday night to Saturday night. Yeah, there is. You can feel it. There is there's a supernatural yeah. difference. You God has it. put his fingerprint on that day. And so I don't care what the pagans called it because they, they, they try to put their veneer over everything. But, guys, we, we need to quit the name calling. We need, to, we need to get out of our echo chambers. We're having sections of the Hebraic Roots Movement now begin to n- deny Messiah. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and that, that's what the infiltration was for. There's, yeah. there's much material that is needed to understand the Word of God, the Kingdom of God. But it gets, it gets to a place where it's, um, it's a burden. And when something gets to be a burden, that's something's out of whack. You know, like they, you're not supposed to light a fire during the Sabbath. So they get, they used to get their fires going before and then keep it going because that'd take a lot of work. I mean, you'd have to gather wood and all that stuff. Now all it takes is us touching a button. Yeah, touching a button to or, warm up food or flicking a bick. You know, that's and, all. It and takes. I just think, and you know, if if I sensed it all because I've been doing it just little by little through the years, if I sensed it all, I was grieving the Holy Spirit, man, I'd change anything. I don't care what God wants me to do. I would do it. It's just, I think that, that there's, um, and this is what I've noticed with the people in the occult that would come around us. If, if they're introduced to the Hebraic roots, if they have an occult background, they are going to stick to the ritual like nothing you'll see. They will, they will take your head off if you miss a punch, if you'd light, if you do anything on the Sabbath, if you would... Uh, start your stove and and cook something and uh because you should have all that meal done you know before in the occult if you mess up their gods will kill you during the ritual that's what i'm saying they they put ritual such a significance on it that the spirit of the lord is out of there and so you know we just had to learn learn through the years and boy do i i want to be obedient to god you wouldn't believe I'd, i'd change anything he told me to anything that was clear to me um but there there's aspects of the Hebraic Roots Movement that would turn anyone away from it. And it's important information. We need to know it. Yeah. You know, when uh, back here, back in, what, 2004, 2005, when uh, I got the privilege of being a part of a group of, of scholars from around the world that had been noted scholars for decades on, uh, on our Hebraic Roots. And so we came up with our ABCs, our affirmations, our beliefs, and our concerns and one of the things that uh, that came out of that conference as part of that is saying, just because you do the Hebraic stuff does not make you special over another believer. And boy, there's been a lot of Hebraic groups that really balked at that. Why? Because it, it gives them a sense of superiority. And the minute that you start turning your nose up at people, and because you know, I've seen that in in the charismatic movement with certain manifestations that weren't in the Word of God that people were experiencing. And if that experience caused a haughtiness, that's a not of God. Yeah, that's true. And, and spirits will try to infiltrate and, and try to ruin everything. But what I can tell you from our experience and just adjusting as we went and praying through it is that it's wonderful. Oh, it's wonderful. There is a peace that rolls in on Sabbath. And, and if you will follow that and, and just take that as a, as a restful day, focusing on God as much as you can um, with whatever you're dealing with, you may have family over or whatever. Um, but it's, it's just a wonderful time. And yeah. I can tell you if, if I've something's come up and it hasn't went that way, you aren't as rested the next week. I mean, God created this so man could rest up and work the other six days. Well, in fact, I've got somewhere in my research where, uh, the author had, uh, gotten with people that, uh, scientists that they, they, they hadn't for a while connecting it with, but it's like from Friday night to Saturday night, they said that the magnetic fields on the earth are different. Mm. Why are they different? Well, that, that, that variance gives it to where if you rest, it's like you get twice the rest. It's like uh-huh. the entire planet uh, changes itself for the Sabbath. And uh, guys, and, and you know, this, this whole thing about rejecting Jesus, you know, that, that's an oxymoron to me because as a Gentile, if you reject Jesus, you have no covenant. Mm-hmm. 
You, you, you have no covenant. You're just a heathen trying to keep the commandments. Well, that, that may have been why we saw so many people that were trying to find out if they had any Jewish heritage, and they were changing their names. And um, it's, it's about relationship, guys. And, you know, like it's, let's say this is, this is a Smita year. Well, we have an ox in the ditch, <laughs> since nobody knew it for one thing. And there are actual food shortages. And I can tell you that this, what's going on with the truckers, uh, we saw somebody, we were at the store last night just gathering a few extra things since we were probably going to have several days we can't get out of here. Um, and they were saying that they came from a family of truckers, and, and they said that there there were truckers here in the United States joining with the Canadian truckers. And and I am, I'm all well, behind them. There were a lot of shelves trying, there at, at Walmart that normally weren't there. It is not, it is not right that they're mandating these vaccines. And so the more people that are able to, to do this kind of a peaceful protest, I'm all for it. Now, it's going to mean shortages uh, as, as if they're not trying to do that anyway. I mean, that's already on, on the docket. They're trying to, you know, wipe out the food and control the food. But, I mean, right now, this year, it's, it's obvious. You don't even have to hear a prophet say it that, that there are going to be some, some shortages. And so, in my opinion, if you can do raised beds or anything like you could just do containers and, and have cucumbers and tomatoes and stuff like that, because there, there may actually be trouble trying to get that. Yeah. And so that's just wise planning. You know, let's, let's, let's go back to Micah was, was Micah six, eight is, is so pivotal because they were, they were trusting in ritual. They were trusting in keeping the Sabbath and, and keeping the feasts and, 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 and just, you know, you can do all that. But if you're not really walking with God, it's useless. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Jesus, how did he call his disciples? Come walk with me and I will make you. Guys, the, the walk, the, the halakha that, that Abraham had is what changed him. I've got a, a course that I taught for the seminary called Covenant of Faith, and it's about the transformation of Abram to Abraham. Mm, that's and, and it, it was so powerful. He went from a guy that was almost afraid of his own shadow, would, would, would tell the Pharaoh that his wife was his sister because he was afraid of what he could do to him. When God got done with him, as he walked with God and, and began to develop confidence, in, and not only confidence in, in the God that he was walking with, but the confidence of what God was doing in him, he heard that his family were taken by four kings and four armies out of Sodom and Gomorrah, he rounded up the boys and went down there and got them. Different guy. Different guy. And if you're walking with God, you begin to change. The, the, the finite cannot come and walk with the infinite and not change. Mm -hmm. and, and this whole thing has always been a call not to walk with religion, not to walk with a system, not to walk with a denomination, but to walk with Almighty God. And when you, when you realize Jesus is Yahweh Elohim, that he is our creator, and he has called us to walk with him, it becomes transformational. And if we're not being transformed, if we become more religious, but there's not in-depth transformation, we're walking with the system, and we're not walking with him. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to read Micah 6, 8 again. I want to read it out of the complete Jewish Bible. Human being, you have already been told what is good and what Adonai demands of you. No more than to act justly, love grace, and walk in purity with your God. Now that, that word judgment is mishpat in Hebrew, which means God's judgments. To walk in God's judgments, what God has said is good is forever good. What God has said is bad is forever bad. You can't protest it away. You can't. Uh, the entire planet can decide tomorrow that what God said is bad becomes good. It doesn't change the fact that in God's court, it's bad. And one day, creation itself will have to stand before him and give an answer. I, I love the way the word of God starts out. It just starts out, in the beginning, God created that the the evolutionist hate that the the atheist hates that the saintist hates that you know why if god created everything as creator all creation must give an answer to him that's right as the creator it's not like he's not got 
an idea of what all they're capable of, even with this AI and all of these things that they're doing. I mean, he is the creator. I mean, he can shut everything down with, with nothing but a word. Yeah, that's it. Nothing but a word. That's how big he is. That's how big he is. And so, guys, it, to, to walk with God, and in fact, I was reading one commentator on this, and and he was basically saying, you know what, you can't really do what Micah said until you get the new birth. You can, you can kind of do it, but you can't really walk with God in depth because so many of the prophets were seeing ahead of where they were and what was possible with God. The next one is a said, which means goodness, kindness, faithfulness. Uh, the complete Jewish Bible translates a grace. And guys, this is not just mercy towards you. This is not just grace towards you. This is showing it to others. Mm -hmm. And my goodness, if you if you see some of the emails and if you see the uh, some of the arguments that go on on social media, we've forgotten mercy. It's worrisome. We we have forgotten mercy. We'll tear each other apart at a, at a heartbeat because there's that anonymity. That uh, I you know I know that if some of these people would try to do this in person, you get your nose bought pretty quick, and that'd kind of be the end of that argument. But mm -hmm. You just have to you have to love, you have and to you love. can and you can get there. I mean, I've had some people say some horrible things about me, and and I I've got to the place I I can love. It took me a while. It's not going to be automatic, I don't think, or maybe that's just me, because <laughs> I stew on things. I don't know if anybody else does that, but I'll just roll it over and over in my mind. And but I may have to do it a thousand times. I choose to forgive. I choose to walk in love. And but you you just keep rolling with that, asking God to to uh, heal you and not yeah. allow bitterness. You know, yeah, a, a growing Christian would write in their journal. As I was rolling Fred across the parking lot for the fourth time, I thought maybe I ought to stop and show him some mercy. Well, and if you if you see, I mean, I got to see firsthand what God's love does when the witch crawled in the van, because the minute I said her name and said I love you, she it was just like all power left her. It was, and that's that's when I started understanding that that the true power of God. Nothing is like the power of his love. It's why Jesus went to the cross. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons that the, the Apostle Paul said, listen, as you're teaching people and as you're bringing them up in the faith, you got to do it with gentleness. Mm -hmm. You may want to head bop, but no, you can't because they're all in a journey just like you were. You know, then, I mean, it was written by the guy that used to put Christians in jail. Well, I, I've failed at that, haven't you, at times? Oh, I yeah. have so failed at it, and, and God would correct me. Of course, I, I knew I'd done it wrong, and I'd always say, I know I got it coming, God. <laughs> I know I did that wrong. I did it in the, And it, one time he told me I, I did something in the flesh, and I said, yes, sir, I did. <laughs> I knew I did it. Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to get to that walk, especially with people that hurt you deep. I mean, there are some deep wounds that it's just like, like the thought of it, you know, makes you cringe. But, but with God, it's possible. Yeah, it is. And, and the third one is to walk humbly. And uh, there's no mystery here. It means to show humility, to be modest. That when we go, and, and I've seen this in the Hebraic Roots movement. I have seen this in the Charismatic movement. I have seen this in the Baptist movement. Did you have this guy come through, and he thinks he's just the hottest thing since Jesus. And he has this attitude, God's just lucky that I'm here, that I could get this done on planet Earth. And I'm thinking, dude, you're about ready to find a, a rough road. Because the truth is, and wait for this, guys, God doesn't need any of us. For him to be God, he needs nothing outside of himself. That's one of the definitions of who God is. He likes us to be in obedience, and so he can use us, though. But he has chosen to work with us mm -hmm. and to love us because he chose to, not because he needed to. Right. And see if you're, let's say if you were walking with someone that was very powerful, that had done great things, let's say had done mighty feats, you would, you would walk with him, but you would remember your place. And that's what this is talking about. To walk humbly in the kingdom. I remember my place that I was a sinner and Jesus saved me. 
that while I was so messed up that maybe my mama didn't even want me, Jesus did. That he gave his life if I had been the only one on planet Earth and I had to have held the nails and driven them into place to save my own self. He would have submitted himself to that and he would have shed his blood to save me. You know, there's, there's a scripture in Hebrews that says that, that for the joy set before him, he endured the horrors of the cross. And for a lot of time, theologians tried to ponder, what, what joy? Was it the joy of going back to heaven? Was it the joy of being reunited with the Father? And then one Protestant theologian, the light came on. He said it was us. Mm-hmm. That's right. He looked ahead. And he saw that there were going to be a people that would give up everything to follow him because they loved him with all of their heart. That's what held him. Yeah. His love for us held him to that cross. Mm-hmm. That's right. And so when you have experienced something like that, well, when you walk with him, it's always with your head in your hand. And it's, you're the master. Mm-hmm. I'm your bond servant. I'm your child. I'm going to be faithful because of what you did for me. There's nothing too great that you could ever ask of me that would even remotely compare to what you've already done for me. And guys, we got to return back to this humility toward one another. Give each other a chance to grow. Quit arguing. (laughs) Quit arguing and trying to find something to make your mark because the truth is the only mark that needs to be made is Jesus making a mark on the people's lives and changing lives. I, I think we have gotten too worldly and too fleshly in so many things. And so Micah calls us back. You got to walk in the commandments. What's, what did Jesus say was the greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. All the prophets, all the commandments, all the prophets, everything hinges on this. And love finds what doesn't remember fault. I mean, the Apostle Paul did a wonderful job in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13. Doesn't find fault, doesn't remember fault, is, is not is quick to judge. Guys, we, we need to return to this humility. Because the truth is, Understanding who Jesus is and adding our Hebraic heritage to it has the ability to turn the world upside down. Yeah. That's why the enemy has worked so hard mm-hmm. to turn it into the messy antics movement instead of, the, instead of yeah. us really rediscovering who we are in Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's crucial to what it's crucial, God guys. wants to do. It's crucial. I'll see if I can see through my tears to see the rest of my notes. You know, and, and this, is, this is out of the Cambridge uh, Bible uh, for schools and, and colleges dealing with uh, the book of Micah here. It says, now he has shown thee. And he says in the law, of, he said when he has shown thee what he's requiring of thee, he said he was talking about the law of Moses, especially in Deuteronomy, what the Lord requires of thee. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And he said to do justly. And he said when he told them to do justly, he said it was absolutely the opposite of the present character of Israel. To do justly and to walk humbly before God is the primary religious virtue in the Old Testament is to walk humbly before God. Then we have commentators show, hey, you know, you can't do this without the new birth. And I, I love, let's see, who was this? This was Adam Clark that said this. Marion, I just love this. He said, without this humiliation of soul, there never was nor never can be any walk with God. For without his mercy, no soul can be saved, and he must be thy God before you can walk with him. Humility is the number one thing. Guys, when, when God came to Abram and he was and he was actually not only living in Babylon, the family business was he was an idol maker. He learned how to make idols with his father in Babylon. 
God came to him and said, I'm the only true God. At that moment, Abram humbled himself, set down those tools of the craft that he had spent his life learning, and walked out of Babylon with his God. Right now, God's calling us. It's time for us to lay down the weapons of war that we're using to fight each other and just humble ourselves and know that we're all sinners saved by grace mm-hmm. and that we all can get in the flesh. We can all get off sometimes. We can, and we need to watch out for the haughtiness alerts that when we think we're so haughty because we're so right and everybody else is so wrong. And we need to learn to humble ourselves and to walk with God knowing that each one of us is in a journey. And guys, in that journey, we need to make sure that we are a help. If you've, if you've never read The Pilgrim's Progress, guys, you need to read it. Because there were helpers and there were hinderers yeah. in the journey of Christian. And we need to take a hard look at ourselves. Am I a helper? Am I like evangelist that comes and, and shares truth that gives strength? And my prudence that comes and teaches him to, Steve, even though the way's hard, you better stay on the path that God has given you? Or am I one of those characters that gets him off and gets him into dire straits? Guys, when we get to heaven, the, what we want to see is a whole line of people that our lives touched theirs and brought them closer to Jesus. Last thing we want to see is the whole line said, yeah, I got in here in spite of this guy. Well, I think that we all face that <clears throat> here in this time right now because the truth is is if, 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 if you're flowing with God's plan, if the kingdom is becoming clear to you how to walk in it, you'll have no doubt family members, friends, if they have any door open to the enemy, the enemy's going to take that door and cause words to come out of their mouths, actions to try to hinder you, to try to hurt you, to try to discourage you. And that, and you have to walk in love with that, but not let it stop you. Oh, absolutely. You walk in love, but but don't let your family, don't let friends stop you from God, what God's telling you to do. If you know that you've heard and, and there are elders that you uh, can be accountable to and you check with and, and say, do you agree that this is what God's telling me and if you've got that then you can't let the world stop you no you can't because he's going to try man the enemy's going to try with any person anything any situation and that and that's what we're seeing right now why so many believers are being so attacked is satan is livid because his plans are not going as smoothly as they've been all these decades and he's he's getting uh alarmed because he's he's seeing the seeing the remnant rise up and if he can't get the remnant off, he's, he's done in for. trouble. Yeah. Okay. And guys, this this with what God wants to do, and th- this is something that I, I've I've taught many times. Sometimes the test that we get from God is a type a type of circumspection that we have to take a hard look at ourselves and say, "Am, am I living up to Micah six eight? Am, am I walking in this, or have I let other things creep in?" Mm-hmm. Because before there can be a promotion in the kingdom, there's always a test. Yeah, we probably need to have this verse taped up somewhere where we can check it every couple of days and say, hey, am I lining up? Oh, yeah. I messed up. And it's going to have a, it's gonna have a warning underneath, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Now, if I put a checklist of everything I have to check on myself, it'd be a long one, guys. It's and we we're we're constantly seeking the face of God, saying, God, don't don't let us get off. We're too old to get off. Uh, but we want to be a help because we, we know that we're, we're in a specific season. And, and you are too, guys. God wants to use all of us. We need to make sure that we're walking the way that Jesus would walk and that we are positioning ourselves when we, when we love his commandments, we're keeping his commandments, and we love mercy, not only to receive mercy but to give mercy, to give mercy to those around us and to humbly walk with God. We're positioning ourselves to where we can say to storms, peace, be still. Mm -hmm. Or we can say, silver and gold have I none, but what I do have I give unto you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Man, that's that's what I'm after. We're going to see eyes 
come back in people's heads. We're going to see limbs grow out. We're going to see the the dead raised. We're going to see miracles in uh, natural things. In the, the what the druids took, you know, the the wind, the the air, the water, <laughs> yeah, the elementals. God is gonna gonna take back control of. He's gonna do away with their uh, harp system and all of those things that they're controlling his creation. He's going to show who's in control. He's about to shut their stuff down. And guys, and you say, oh, my God, Mary, I just, I just don't know. Guys, we're already hearing reports of people that COVID had pretty much destroyed their lungs, mm-hmm. and the doctors are confounded because the lungs were restored. That's right. Oh, that reminds me of another young man. I can't remember his name, but I want you to pray with me. It's um, There's a woman that's at the local farmer's market, and she just has wonderful food she brings there. and uh, We've not met her son, but they were on vacation in um, in Florida. He was in a terrible motorcycle wreck. I think it broke his, uh, broke one arm, and then on the other side broke the leg in eight places. And they they are considering removing his leg. Oh, Lord. And this you. is a young man, and we just, we just cry out, God, for your mercy. Yes. Father, heal this young man. Let Restore. it be a testimony of your great power. Father, heal bones that look like they, they're shattered. Father, reconnect the circulatory systems where he won't lose a leg or a foot. Yes, Father. Father, do a miracle, we ask for this young man in Jesus' name. Yes, right. And before I forget, I want to remind everybody about the Here to the Watchman Conference in Dallas. Guys, that can be a place of divine visitation from God if we'll pray. Yeah, we got to pray and, ahead and, of time. And seek the face of God. That's going to be... Uh, March 17th through 20th. Uh, for more information, you can go to hearthewatchman.com. And uh, this, when we get closer to the end of July, I'm going to be back in Ohio with Dr. Mike Spaulding. And he's he's like a brother from another mother. And, and he's just a good friend of the Lord. I'm expecting God to do great things there. And so we have some things that are, that are lined out uh, for this year that we're excited about. We know that God's going to do great things. Now, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus. Father, that you would give us a heart to love your commandments, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, Lord. The Bible says that if we will humble ourselves, it's, it's, it's not that we have to be forced to be humbled like uh, some, some uh, rebellious person that's thrown to the ground under, under the weight of a, a superior force, but God... The Bible says we can humble ourselves in the sight of God in a due season. He'll lift us up. And, Father, we choose to humble before you. We choose to humble before your throne. And, Father, we swear allegiance to your throne and your throne alone. And, Father, give us your grace that we will never bow to Mystery Babylon. We will never bow to the son of perdition. We will never bow to the one world government. We'll never bow. But we'll proclaim that Jesus is Lord Mm -hmm. and that he is king and that he is coming back. Give us that we ask, Father, in Jesus' name. In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born. The first world king, the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot, Nimrod. In Babylon, the son of perdition devised the Shinar Directive, a plan to enslave humanity and make war against the God of Heaven. God's intervention at the Tower of Babel only delayed Nimrod's hellish plans. As the powers of Mystery Babylon gathered to create the new Tower of Babel and to prepare for the son of perdition's return, Heaven is issuing a clarion call to the remnant. The Shinar Directive will reveal the strategies of the enemy that will help you untangle yourself from them and become the victorious church. It is time for the remnant to wake up, discern the times, and be infused with Heaven's power to withstand The Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Get your copy today at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Oh, 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 oh,